So today we've got Tommy Mallet in. Tommy is a proper modern day entrepreneur. Um, owns the company Mallet Shoes. Yeah, proper legend. It was on a TV show back in the day. And I'm going to pick his brain because he, to me, he represents a proper young modern day entrepreneur. And so I want to talk to him about all sorts of things like pressures and stuff, being a young guy, all that kind of stuff. So it'll be here in a minute. So ready to roll? Tommy Mallet. Thanks for having me. Welcome to Shoreditch. I mean, you're in. You're here now. We're neighbours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you sent me a video outside there the other day. We've been trying to link up for so long, and I literally I've opened my office there. Yeah. And I was looking at this building the this other one. day because yeah, because yeah, yeah. obviously the upstairs and all that. Yeah, been. yeah. I started filming it and then you messaged me about a minute later and was like, yeah, my what? office is on this road and we're, we're neighbours. So yeah, finally we got together. That's things. Yeah, good. Yeah, good. Yeah, we've been talking for... It's about a year now, I think. That's Maybe mine, longer. Yeah. yeah. You're always busy. You're doing a house. Hold on. You're making a house, making a baby. Yeah. What house. They say the most stressful things in life is moving, building a house and having a baby, yeah? Really? And I've done all of them at the same time. <laughs> so it's been a bit of a journey. So like, I'm finding my feet now, getting back to normal, starting to travel a bit and things like that. So, yeah. and also as well is obviously because I follow you on Instagram, I need to learn a few things before I come sat down with you yeah, because I don't want to be caught short on nothing. Yeah, and I watch a lot of the stuff you do, and I'm like, I'm like taking notes and like rehearsing. And things like that. <laughs> you you said to me just before you want to ask me some questions. Yeah. So do you want to ask me first, or should, can I ask you some questions first? You can ask me whatever you want. All right. Well, everyone watching this is going to know who you are. Um, Maybe. What? So I've got I've got specific questions for you, um, and it's like this is actually for later. But one of my things that I wanted to talk to you about today is. You're like a modern day entrepreneur, young guy, you know, same as me, come from absolutely nothing, um, figured out a way to like sell products, make something cool and, you know, do it that way. Not, not, you know, there's no inherence money, none of that kind of stuff. What I notice a lot with younger guys is that um, it feels like there's much more of a pressure on them than there was when I was um, like 18, 21. I, I watched a video of you and you were saying I was, you know, like trying to figure out selling like stuff and I'm wearing a 10 grand watch. And I, ne I, I remember that quote is brilliant because it was like, fake it till you make it. Yeah. And I feel like that's like a really like uh, apparent thing nowadays. Yeah. You know? You're 29, right? Yeah. yeah. So I'm 41. So we're like one little bit off each other. I'd say you're like more super modern. Yeah. yeah? Is there more of a pressure on younger guys now? I to think, be successful. Oh, 100%. But I think a lot of it comes down from following people like me. <laughs> Doesn't it? They're really. And that's why I try to be very careful in what I do with my, my profile. Like, I don't... I try to make sure everything I put out there, I keep it so I'll relate back to my story and why I'm doing what I'm doing. Because you obviously you see a lot of people out there at the moment, like, everyone's got a gold watch on. Everyone's got a Lamborghini at the moment and things like that. And... Obviously, as a kid, I don't think... We had Facebook and stuff like that when I was growing up, but it, we had Facebook and that growing up, but we didn't have Instagram, and I think it's getting worse and worse and worse. So obviously, yeah, there's a massive pressure, and I feel like it ain't really going in a good way because people are driving themselves so mad that they're forgetting what they're actually setting out to do. So yeah. I try to be very careful, and I try to inspire, but in a way of doing it to inspire people to go out and start businesses, not to inspire them to go out and spunk their money on cars and watches and things like that which are great investments at the moment and I wish yeah. I did keep that 10 grand watch because it's probably worth <laughs> 50 now <laughs> but there is yeah there's a lot of pressure I'll take a lot of time off of social media like I have little spurts of going on and off because I'm a huge success but I still look at other people and think oh they're doing better than me and obviously not so much now because I feel like I'm really settled in what I've done but I look at the, some people and think, wow, look how much they've got, like things like that. So if I'm doing it, imagine what the person, the normal day-to-day -day person's doing. So yeah, there's a big, big, I feel like it's, it's, it's dangerous actually. Mm. I feel like it's dangerous. Because mm. I look at people, I would look at you, of what you've got, and I'd look into your businesses and things like that. And then I'd get inspiration from it. But I wouldn't look at it from like, because what you've got like material things, I'd look at how many businesses you've got leveraged out over your portfolio. Mm -hmm. Other people would look at your car 
and think, I want that. I wouldn't. I'll look at the whole structure of how you got the car and that's what I want. Yeah. So I think there's two ways of looking at it. Yeah, do you know what? It's funny. Do you know the philosopher Alan Watts? No. Okay, check that guy out, right? Um, amazing. He like, died in the 70s or 80s, but like he recorded all of his conversations because he was like a philosopher at university. He's an English guy, but, um, but he said, and it, 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 I, I listened to this the other day, he said... The problem with people is that they'll see you and they'll see me, for example, like a younger guy cause talk about pressure, is they'll they'll see me as complete, right? They'll see me at like 40, you know, girlfriend, dog, nice houses, cars, all that kind of stuff. But I don't see myself as complete. I see myself as incomplete. Yeah. If I saw myself as complete, then I'd just wither away and die. But because we all see ourselves as incomplete, you know, um, it's the opposite of every how everyone else sees you, which is a weird thing because you know some younger guys will look at you and go, "He's done it. He's done. It. He's got his own company. He smashed it." Blah 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 blah. But like you say, like we said before, like it, you're incomplete. You're still learning about economics. You, you just oh, of course, hundred percent. Yeah. So it, it's and that's what I think Instagram elevates is yeah. that they elevate the incomplete complete scenario yeah which is terrible for younger people 100 percent. because they think oh i gotta do everything i can just to get that car and that thing but that's not re- the reality of it if that makes sense do you know what it is if i was complete i wouldn't be on social media right because i'm only on social media to keep promoting myself to get bigger and bigger but then why do i even want to get bigger and bigger what, what am i doing this for do you know what i mean yeah. why why I'm, I'll be completely honest with you, I'm not happy. No, I, I'm not happy because my ambition hurts me. And that's a very dangerous thing. I look at people sometimes who earn a good salary, look, work alongside me, and I resent them sometimes because on the weekend, I'm the one that is going, I am, I am obsessed. That's what makes an entrepreneur, yeah? Mm-hmm. I am obsessed to the point where I can watch an advert on the TV and I'll notice from another brand what they've done wrong. Yeah. Like, oh my God, there's a bin in the background of that, that advert and you can see a bit of branding on it. I am obsessed. Mm-hmm. I'll go through every social media channel, every store that uh, affiliates themselves to Mallet. Um, anyone wearing my product, I'm, I'm literally obsessed with it to the point where you have to be like that to be successful. Yeah. But then there's a step down where you can be on under 200 grand a year and you can turn your phone off on a Friday and enjoy your weekend. Yeah. I don't have that luxury. I cannot do it. I've just yeah. been away in Mexico with my family, yeah? I've got a 10-month-year-old. I've got engaged while I was abroad. I was filming my own TV show while I was there. And one or two days, I'm cool, I'm relaxed. Ah, oh, this is lovely. Yeah. Day three, I've got something in my body, which drives me insane. I'm like trying to buy cars. I'm trying to buy houses. <laughs> I'm like setting up this and that. I'm that. I'm, I'm obsessed. Are you making a lot of noise down there, brother? <laughs> I just look at Bruno sometimes and I think, just be like Bruno. Imagine how lucky he is. Like, for, for me, it's like, I'm, I'm looking at other people as inspiration. Yeah. And I feel like, where, where does it stop? To the point of, I'm never going to have any peace. Yeah, so don't I, try and be like me. It's not not worth it. You're not. You've got to be built a certain person to be like me. Yeah. You, it's 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 not me. I don't know many people like me to be honest. With you are. Yeah. No. I th- I was I was saying this to um, Jay on the podcast the other week, and I was saying, I think you're born with motivation, or you're not. I I don't I don't think you can sort of teach it. No. You can inspire people. You can't tell anyone to do anything. You can inspire them to do stuff. You know. Um, but. Yeah, I just think you're, I do think you're born with it. I think it's like a bit like, um, it's like a cog in your brain that's 100%. not right. And it's like... It's an illness, I think. I'm not even joking. I honestly <laughs> think illness. it's an illness. It's mental illness. It is, it's a, it is an illness. It is an illness because it does lead, yeah. it, uh, it either goes one way, yeah? Yeah. You have a, set yourself a plan which has an end to it and then you get out of that time. For example, you sell your business and you move abroad with your family and kids and then you live up here every after, yeah. which most people entrepreneurs will never do yeah. or you get to the point where you've never thought you'd get to and you want more yeah. and then where does it go from there it, it don't, don't does it it doesn't end and no one addresses it because we're so ambitious to do what we want to do yeah. answer the question have you ever had a win and thought wow wicked I've just I've just earned that I'm going to stop for a little while or do you earn that and go how can I invest in and make it even more yeah it's true 
It's a part of your brain that it's an, it's an addiction. This is why they say making your first million is the hardest. And the one you ring after that, it don't matter, does it? It's and that's the thing, because you know how to make a million. Mm. And once you know, then why not make 10? And then after you've earned the first million, and I think like a lot of the time with it as well is for the first six months to year, you want to hold it there. You don't want to like, you don't want it to go anywhere. You want to see it there. You don't want to invest it and things like that. But when you learn actually about how inflation works and things like that, and then you start learning how to invest that money, yep. it starts working for you anyway. Yeah. So the hardest one is earning the first one and having to pay the tax on the first one. Once you've done that, it's a jolly, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. It actually, that's how it becomes, doesn't it? Yeah. Talk, talking about um, people you know that with more money, because you see people who are doing better. I've got a friend, he's probably, I don't even know, hundreds probably. But he said, once you make your first 10, it's easy to make 100. <laughs> I was like, easy for you to say. I'll be honest with you, yeah. I'm the po- I've got two networks of friends, yeah. I've got the network of friends that I grew up with who keep me grounded to be the same as I am. That's why I still talk the same, dress the same, act the same. But then I've got another network of people. I'm the poorest one. Mm-hmm. And that's there is where I ask a lot of my questions. Yeah. Is like, how, how are people feeling and things like that? And I feel like... The ones I grew up with are so much more happier than the ones that I asked on a day to day about money. It's because the other sides, there's so much obsession behind it. I, I, I'm the same as you, like the same, like I all hang out with my friends, all from, you know, I used to go to school with and stuff when I was two and that. Um, but then the thing is, like, the thing is, like, it's like, it's, it's, it's like Biggie, isn't it? Like, um, more money, more problems. 100%. Yeah. But the thing is, what they mean by that is admin. I just call it admin. Like, if you own five cars, it's admin it's sorting the tax annoying, out. And like, MOT? What? Like, oh, I've got to deal with this shit. Like, I've got, a com- like, I've got five companies I'm trying to run. I've got to fucking deal with this wanker at the <laughs> HMRC or like DBLA, whatever, <laughs> of a tax I'm paying. Like, and then I'll get a fine because I, I haven't done, like, you know, yeah. whatever. And that's the, that's the problem with it. It's okay owning them all. Yeah. It's just the admin that goes with it. Yeah, 100%. The, you know? No, no, 100%. Um, you've got an SLS right I've got an SLS that's a sick car yeah, I do want an SLS dude do you right. know what I'll be honest with you yeah I bought the SLS because I wanted it forever yeah I found the right one to buy um, obviously anyone that owns an SLS yeah uses the same emoji the stock emoji that's only but going one way <laughs> but after six months of having it and driving it twice and it being in storage it started pissing me off because I'm like I need to keep up with services because obviously it's going one way so it needs a service book with it making yeah. sure there's tax or making sure or sawning it paying for storage where it is and things like that but it's one of them cars where I personally think it's only going to go one way I think it's going to go up it ain't going to be a million pound car like anyone thinks it's going to be but it's going to yeah. go up well in, with inflation it might be in, in a couple of weeks well maybe let's, let's, <laughs> Three and half half let's give it a year or so it might be a million quid but like that and Things like anything V8, I like V8. So I've got a G-Wagon, got a G63, I've got an yeah. SLS, yeah. and I've got a Carpathian edition uh, Defender, the V8. The new Five one. litre, yeah, yeah. yeah nice. It's actually getting delivered in an hour. Um, I've got nice. one of them. But like, um, They've I gone li- up 20 grand since you buy them. I like anything noisy. And you know, at the, at the minute, it's, with the way the world's going, I'm quite quick to jump on things. Yeah. And I'm seeing the way that things are levelling up. And look, I don't, and we'll get onto this after, I don't invest anything crypto or anything digital because I don't know enough about it. So I hope I can learn enough today to make me. But I see the way that things are going. And at one point I had five cars. Some of them I don't drive, some of them in storage. But I love seeing things go up in value. I hate seeing them go down. But I love, and unless they're for sale, I don't feel like they're going down. Yeah. But I had four cars and like, I was driving a car for like a year and it went up 15 grand. How? How? Because of these chips or whatever it is yeah, 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 or yeah, the yeah. St- things. Yeah. So at the moment, I've got three cars. Um, they're all V8s. And I personally think they're the final V8s that are going to be made for Land Rover. So I'm definitely going to hold on to it yeah. because I see that they're going electric in 2030 or something like that. Yeah. So I'm putting my money in in a minute, things that I can enjoy that ain't going to go down in value. Hopefully the bubble don't burst and I lose all my money. But at the minute, that's what I'm doing. Makes sense. Yeah, I see them as a store of value. 100%. You know, like Bitcoin or gold or whatever. Um, yeah, like my cars have gone up. But then it's like, it's a bit like, I remember when I was about 18 and people would buy a house that I worked with. And they'd be like, that's already gone up 20 grand. And I'm like, well, 
sell it then and show me you got 20 grand because exactly. otherwise you're just chatting shit and they would also and I'd be like well it's fine it's gone up 20 grand but all the other houses have too so you're not going to buy a better house unless you've got your house them, it yeah, matter, they've it? all gone up like it's not like yours is like do better. you know what I want to ask you actually and this, I think this is a very very good question to ask someone else that the viewers can watch and it's important because I personally feel like to be successful, yeah, you have to forget everything you've been taught, yeah? Because leave school with GCSEs, go to university, get a good job, get a mortgage, pay the mortgage off, then get a pension and then die. And that sounds bad. And then when your kids inherit it, whatever the house is worth, 20 to 40% in capital gains or inheritance tax, yeah? Inheritance tax, yeah, 40%. What's your thought on buying property? Um, if you can Airbnb it, then do it. What about just buying property for yourself? Uh, What's better, well, buying a house or renting a house? Well, the thing, well, when I when I got to London, when I was like, I don't know, twenty one or something, um, I rented a three bedroom place and I rented two rooms out, so I didn't pay rent. So I was living in a house for free. Yeah, but you're sick because that's like you even turned your living situation <laughs> into a business. Yeah, but well, I just <laughs> I just didn't want to pay rent, and, and that and that's what you have to do. Like you, that was like my little. I had no money. I was in debt. You know, yeah, it's back from traveling. So I was like, that's what I did. So if it, if you want a free house, rent and then rent the rooms out. But Airbnb wasn't around then. So now, I don't think buying a house is a good idea unless you have tons of money that you're buying it because it doesn't really make a difference to you. But as far as like getting a loan, because a mortgage is a fancy term for a loan. Of course it is. Like you're just getting a loan. Like you, people go, oh, I own my house. Well, no, you don't. A bank owns it. And also the government own it because if they can take it off you, which they can, look at sanctions, right? Do you actually own your house? No. Not only that, if you do pay it off in 50 years, yeah, because you're going to remortgage it and buy a fucking fancy car or wedding ring, whatever, when you when you die, the bank the bank has to give the government forty percent of it. So you don't even own a hundred percent of your house anyway. It's mad, isn't it? The most you own of your house if you pay off all all of the debt, the loan, is sixty percent. Like it's a scam. Like wow, in, yeah. unless you save up money and then buy it cash, then and you can Airbnb it to get an income. To earn the forty percent back that like you've got to have to pay one day over the fifty years, then yeah. you don't earn one hundred percent of the house, do you? you? Don't. No, but the problem is, is that during COVID, <coughs> all the money that was printed and eighty percent of the money is your dog alive. Yeah, he's just chilling. <laughs> let him stop. Then you look at him. Look. <laughs> <laughs> well, say that again. Um, yeah, he did, when you look at him, he looks like he's been caught out. Um, oh, bless you. Can have some water? Uh, um, so basically, eighty percent of the money in in circulation in America was printed in the last two years, right? Which is why there's so much inflation because they just print money. The problem with that is the money that the money that they print they have to lend to people or companies, big corporations. So the big corporations that are borrowing this money at like naught percent or naught point plane companies and things like that, aviation firms, or Hu oil, yeah, like no, like BlackRock, these mad huge companies that own everything. Um, they're buying property with it, right? So you know, like, people are, like, buying online. They're not even looking at it. It's corporations. The problem is they buy everything because they get a 0% rate. It's free money. It's free money. We can't do that, the public. We can't borrow and get a loan to buy a house at 0%. But they do it, so they buy up all the property. All the properties then, like, goes up in value because they can put a price for whatever they want. And then the rents go up because they charge what they want. They uh, Imagine owning all the apartments in Shoreditch and you're like... Fuck it, I'm just going to put the rent up 100%. Because you own all of them, innit? And yeah. you can do what you want. And that's what's happening. The money that the, the, the government are printing, they're lending it to these corporations and they're buying up properties. Wow. So that's so where it's all going. That's why everything's going up. It's not going up because all of a sudden, like, everyone's got loads of money. Everyone's got less money. But the 1% are putting it up. Yeah, wow. I'm going to move Bruno because he's good looks like. But these dogs breathe so loud, man. He's just hot. Come here, come here. Come here. Here we go. Come here. Come here. It's a good question about the properties, isn't it? Mm, very good. Because this is the main problem I have, and that's why I asked you it, because I know it, it's the main, main problem that I have with anyone that I work with who's on a salary, yeah? They come to me... And it's about once a year I end up getting new people. 
Oh no, but I don't even own a house. All right, well, who gives a fuck? Where do you live? Have you got a nice house? Are you, are you, are you comfortable? Have you got yeah. money left at the end of the month to save? Yeah. And a lot of the time, the answer is yes. All right, cool. So why are you so bothered about putting all your money into a house to, when you add it up actually, and because I don't think people do this, yeah? yeah? When they get a mortgage out, they don't understand the interest in the mortgage is an annual thing, yeah? So, yeah. And especially with the interest rate going up last week. Yeah. Once you pay that mortgage, if you've got, say, for example, half a million pound mortgage, just what is it, 10 grand a year you're paying interest? God knows, it's like insane. Well, if you've got a grand a month property, then you ain't far off what you're paying in interest. For your, it's just mad, isn't it? Yeah. And I feel like none of this stuff's been taught and it causes so much anxiety for the kids these days yeah. that they feel the pressure they have to own a property. But if you go to Amsterdam, you go to Germany, no one owns properties there because there's too much tax on it. Yeah. It's mad, isn't it? Yeah, a lot of Germans don't really own property. Go to the Netherlands, no one owns no property. Well, they do, because if they do, they've, they've got a lot of money because the property, one, is too expensive, yeah. and two, the tax on the property is too much. So it's something that at the moment I'm trying to learn myself. Even though I'm successful, I'm successful in one field. I'm not successful in any other fields at the moment, so mm -hmm. I put a lot, of, like, a lot of time into trying to learn about it. And there's been times where I've looked at my house and I've said, should I pay it off? Because I can pay it off. I'm like, no, what's the fucking point? No. Why would I? No. Why would I? It's free money, isn't it, really? If, yeah. It's, it's, why would I have... Unless I can... Whatever I owe on my house, can I invest that annually and get more than 2% out of it? 100%. Yeah. So why would I put it into a house if I can just pay 2% on it? The, the, the problem and the question that people... Because you don't see on the news that BlackRock are borrowing money off the government and then buying loads of property. You'd never see it on the news. So no one really understands it. But the, the problem that... The problem is, is that, like you say, with your employees, we should be able to own a property. You know, Connor should be able to own a property. You know, he's like a 26-year-old guy, he works hard. You know, everyone should be able to own a property. Our parents were able to own a property. The problem is the government have fucked up so bad, yeah, and they've like, lent money to all these people and they shouldn't be doing it, that we can't own property now. You know, they're having like, they're having like wars, yeah, because... I mean, we could go on forever, but the, the problem is, like, the reason I don't watch the news and take any notice of media is because if you're talking about something at a water cooler in the office, it means you're the customer, right? If you're talking about the Ukraine war, right, it's because you're a customer of it. We pay for wars with taxes. Of course you do. Right? The only way to justify a war is by convincing us that it's the right thing to do. And how they do it with the news, right? But really, sanctioning Russia, the people that pay for it is you and me when we go and try and buy fuel. Our electricity goes up. You know, even that money, um, money guy, uh, Martin, Martin Lewis. Lewis, he was in an interview the other day. He goes, he goes, I'm the money expert in the UK, have been for a long time. He goes, I cannot help anyone anymore. The government have to intervene. But they don't give a shit. They don't care. And then they're sanctioning the properties and things like that up the West End and they're selling them off a bit cheaper, but you don't even see them get on the market because they're going to the big corporations. So they're just going in a big circle. Mm -hmm. It's mad, isn't it? And that's why the 1% just keep getting richer. Uh, but we're, what we are with the 1% really, in theory. Yeah, we are the 1%, but we're not in the, the, the elite. 1% of the 1%. Yeah. You know, there's the 1%. Like you say, you know, you think you've done all right. I think I've yeah, done all right. And then, you and then man. you're like, you know, <laughs> you're like, it's like point not one percent uh, zipping, in it. It's like the, the video. The, you see the millionaire yacht, yeah, and then yeah. the video goes yeah, round, yeah. and it's the billionaire yacht, and you're like, fuck, this guy spent seven mil it's on this. Crazy, isn't it? And that 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 is the thing. You see the yacht, and then you see the that's the person running stuff. You know, it's like Kanye West says. He says he goes. You think you think basketball players are rich? He's like, the guy paying them is the rich guy. Mm. Like, you know, they're rich, but they're not wealthy. I was know? thinking that the other day, yeah, because I was watching that F1 documentary on uh, Netflix. Yeah, so good. It's unbelievable. So like, good. All of a sudden, I love F1, yeah? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but then... You're going to get an F1 car. I'm stop probably going to get an F1 car, to be fair, yeah. But, the, but what I we'll found interesting we'll about it was, yeah, <laughs> is... Um, is it Haas or something? Haas, yeah. So the investor that come in was the racing driver's dad. He was a Russian, Russian guy. He owns a fertilising company, yeah? Fertilising. Yeah. So I started checking out um, how much they pay the F1 drivers. So that's some of them on 28 million a year and things like that, yeah? Yeah. 
how much are these people spending to sponsor these F1 teams and how the fuck are they getting any money back? And um, what are they getting back from it? Well, it's a tax write-off. Oh, is that what it is? I yeah. thought it. So that's, it, that's it, the question that, I That's what it's going to be. Um, I had William Story. He, he's the guy that um, runs it all. And there was just like this whole like, you know, like who is this guy? But obviously they did their due diligence, you know, for an F1 team to sponsor. But it's about, it was about 30 million quid. For what though? That's what I don't understand. Why? Stickers on a car, you know? Because because do they want to be involved in it or are they getting anything back from it? Yeah, well, they get brand awareness. That's pretty much it, really. But then some drivers, they do it so their son can be the driver. Ah, see, that makes sense, doesn't it? And they pulled out because I see that the guy who owned the fertilising company um, yeah. was going to pull the sponsor because the another driver was getting a lighter car or something by a few grams or the chassis in the car was lighter yeah it's crazy isn't it this is that one percent of the one percent level money it's you know? mad isn't it yeah it's like so you like you go on auto trader look at cars and stuff you know i like look at cars apartments these guys look at buying formula one teams so they, yeah <laughs> so it makes sense <laughs> that's what it? they're doing no it does it makes you sense know? wow so how do you how do you get to the stage where so is that where crypto's coming into it now? Because everything at the moment is literally fucked. Well, like the thing with Bitcoin is that I, I just did a video like last week about it. It's like if, say for example, right, I had a gun and I said, give me a watch, right? And you were like, no, no. And then I kill you and then I take your watch, right? The government can do that with your house. Right, effectively, they can do everything that we think we own, we don't own, because the government can take it. So we don't own it, right? Even when you die, they take 40%. With Bitcoin, if I said, give me your Bitcoin, and you were like, go fuck yourself, kill me, and I killed you, I don't have your Bitcoin. I can't take it, I can't sanction it, can't do anything, because you own it on a private key, passwords in your head. You know, and this is the difference between what's going to happen in the future. This is our escape, our hope for everybody to keep our assets and our value, right? If I was to like, say I own this studio and I moved to Costa Rica, right? And I'm like, fuck, fuck the UK, I'm sick of paying tax, whatever. I can't take this apartment with me. No, of course you can't. Right? I can't take a bar of gold either, right? There'd be legalities where, you, you know, you can't take 10 grand cash and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I can't even take a bar of gold. It costs me to transport it. Trying to sell it will be a nightmare. Bitcoin though, I just get on the plane. When I get there, it's worth the same amount of money I can, I can transfer it to anyone I want. It doesn't cost me anything. So it's basically something that you can move around, for example, because you can invest into watches, you can invest into cars, watches you can get and take anywhere, to be honest with you, and it can be yeah. easier, but you still got to take a currency to sell the watch off, yeah? Which can be sanctioned at any, or whatever. So well, with Bitcoin, yeah. it can't. But I've got a question for you, yeah? Because you put a million dollars into Bitcoin, didn't you? Mm -hmm. So I watched that and thought, this geezer's fucking off his head. <laughs> I'll be completely unsure. <laughs> this geezer has either got too much money, yeah? <laughs> or you just fucking lost your head. And then I've seen what it's grown into. And now I'm like, all right, cool. Because I see how calm you are with the drop in and it going up and things like that. And we'll, go, we'll dip into this more. But the question is, yeah, I've got a gun to red. Give me a Bitcoin. No, fuck off. All right, bang. What if the geezer rings you and says, give me your Bitcoin, otherwise I'm fucking turning it off. Is there not someone that can just stop this Bitcoin? What, how, how do you stop someone robbing it? What, what is it? I don't understand. Because I'm hearing these people mining Bitcoin, okay. yeah? Yeah. How the fuck can you mine something which is on a computer? What's going on here? <laughs> this is a longer conversation, but basically, like, okay, you've got money in the bank. I think so. Right? If I had a gun and said, give me your money in the bank. Yeah. And you went, no. Yeah. How am I get? and I shoot you, how am I going to get the cash? Yeah, it's the same I thing. I can't. It's just exactly the same thing. Because it's new, people think that you walk around with a magical Bitcoin <laughs> bag, you know, magic internet money, and it's like, you, could, you can't steal it. Here's the other thing, and I don't think I've mentioned this, yeah, is BlockFi, where I store the $1 million or whatever it is Block, now. What is it called? BlockFi. The way it works there, even if you were to kidnap somebody that had money in BlockFi, right, you can't transfer that Bitcoin, right? There's a thing in it, like a security thing in there, where even if you were like kidnapped and you put the address that you wanted to send it in, send it to, they have to verify it again with you 
And it's a minimum seven days, if you have the seven days on, that you can even transfer it. They won't even, you can't even transfer it. So the security inside, yeah, is way more than the bank, right? You can have it set up. So, uh, you know, if, say, I want to buy some shoes off you, right? Say, say a grand's worth of shoes and you go pay me in Bitcoin. I can't because mine's set up so that it's going to take me at least a month before I verify your address and then send it to you. That's how secure that's, it is. That's, that's just certain wallets that do that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's so, quite good. So even if, even if I was like, give me your Bitcoin, you'd be like, well, you're going to have to wait a month. Yeah. Even if I decide to let you have it. it. Yeah. Exactly. Who, who, who's in the background of all this, like putting all these security measures in, in place? So why are you so calm about having a million pound in Bitcoin? Or one point four dollars or whatever you've got in there. Why are you so calm about it? Well, risk is only risk if you don't know what you're doing. Well, I'll look at it more so you're not bothered if you lose this million dollars. I'm not gonna lose it. I hope you don't. And it I, went I, up to two and a half. That I was know the problem. It did. And I was like, this geezer, <laughs> why are you not taking it out? And and things like that. Okay, well, okay, so say, okay, it's a question for you. You put a million and it goes to two and a half. What are you gonna do with it? What if I don't need the money? No, no. Well, it doesn't matter. I'd what probably you, what leave we... it. I'd, I'll, if I if I didn't if the money's in there, yeah, yeah, it's like having money in the bank. I'd probably leave it there. To be honest with you, yeah, because there's more there's more scope of it going. If it's got to two and a half, it can get to three and a half. And that's wishful thinking, yeah. But I don't know nothing about it. That's why I don't have a million pound in Bitcoin. Why are you so calm? Because I understand it. But yeah, that's I... the that's what I want. That's the thing I want to show to people because people ask me all the time. Have you got any money in uh, any yeah. crypto, NFTs, all this stuff? No, I don't. I don't have any money in anything like that. Yeah. And the reason being is because I make shoes and I'm good at earning money. Yeah. I ain't, I ain't got a fucking clue about anything else. I'll be honest, y'all. At the moment. At the moment. But now I know you, where shall I send it? <laughs> <laughs> Can, have you got insurance for it? <laughs> the, the thing with a CEO, it's funny because a lot of people ask me about it. Like, um, the thing with a CEO now, you can't just be someone that runs a company. You have to be someone that invests capital. 100%. Right? So you're on that journey now. You've you created the capital, right? You've done really well. Now you're like, I need to invest capital because if I don't invest it, I'm going to lose 10% a year from mm -hmm. inflation. I'm getting fucked with government and tax. So where do I put it? That's the question you, you people need to ask. Even if you're a CEO with 10 grand in the bank or 100 grand or a million quid, whatever, you need to be a CEO that has spent half your time investing, half your time running the company. And you're just about to start that journey. You know? Yeah, in the investing side of it, I'm 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 good at that. Um, investing in things that I can touch and feel and things like that. But the whole digital marketing, the whole digital point of it, I ain't got a clue about. But obviously, I'm watching it now, and I'm looking at the same people I was looking at two years ago. Yeah, thinking they're gonna lose it all, and they've still got it. So now is the point where I'm like, my ears are getting up to it, and I'm looking at it thinking like, this is the way forward. Yeah. So yeah, it's mad. Well, uh, what's, it, what's it on at a minute? 1.4? I don't know. It's too calm, man. I don't know. Did you invent it or something? <laughs> no, Why are you so fucking, fucking calm, wish. bro? Dude, I've been in it for so long. That's, it's like you dealing with shoes. Like it's second nature to you. You understand it. You know what what's the market's doing. What was it at when the first time you ever bought it? The first time I heard about it was about $1,200. Yeah. And my friend, a friend of mine who uh, was a client actually, um, on mobile he's a good friend of mine he he told me about it and I think it was like he bought Ethereum at eight dollars mate I was getting offered it <laughs> in 2000 so I want to say 2015 or 2016 yeah when did it come out it was before that 2009 wasn't it? so I reckon yeah I got offered it by a guy it was a Brazilian guy in Marbella who was quite young. That sounds dodgy already. Yeah. Right? Right. And he was like, he was quite young and he was over there with his missus, ended up being connected to someone we was and he was living there because he had yeah. bought at the lowest and sold at thingy. And I was like, I wonder what this guy is sitting on now because I'm sure he bought it when it first came out. How much was it? $7 or something when it first came out? Oh no, it was, not even, it was pennies. He bought it in less than 10. Yeah. Crazy. And they had a lot of it, this guy. But I think they all sold, a lot of people sold out of Bitcoin in it's 2018, hard. was it? It's when when it went to it. the peak, what, 42? No, no, it was 20K in the end of 2017. And then it went up to 40 odd, didn't it? 68, it's gone up to 68. Is that what it's now? Yeah. Like, no, 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 right now it's like 42, I think. 41. When's the time to buy? 
Well, it depends how long. <laughs> I feel like, well, I, I want to ask you questions. Yeah, you can ask me like, a question. <laughs> I'm asking you a question. Um, well, it depends how long you're going to hold it for, right? If it's money that you need to pay your rent, don't put it in. But if it's money you can leave in for five years, now is the, always the time to buy. See, that's why I'm successful, yeah, because I'm grilling this guy, yeah, and taking everything in. <laughs> I'm going to be asking I'll cover, Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll answer any question you want, yeah, but you're more interesting than I am. You no, just don't mate, know it. You just don't know it. And I'll do that on the day-to-day of everyone, and that's why it's really important. Have you seen how I've asked you so many questions? I've not spoken about myself. I'm irrelevant at the moment. Yeah? No, no, no. We need, the I'm podcast gonna, is I'm gonna, me talking to you. I don't have a million about... pound in Bitcoin at the minute. You do. No, <laughs> let's crack on. Oh, <laughs> let's talk about that after the chat. Like, how long have we been talking for? Like, <laughs> oh, sorry, everyone. Like, um, so because young guys going to watch you and think, I want to create a company. How do I do it? Right. So, how did you start your first company? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll just get that basics out of the way, and then I got some more questions. Started my first company in 2000. I had little little companies back and forward for years growing up. What it was events, companies, yeah. promotion, things like that. Um, and then I got actually invited to have some shares in a nightclub in 2015 from some older friends that I got involved in, and that's where I started earning decent money. Mm-hmm. And then being young, spent all of that on nights out, cars, stuff like that. Um, was on the only as Essex, went on there thinking that I was going to get nightclub appearances. But what happened was, is Love Island launched basically just after I went on there. So then the amount of reality stars in the industry was crazy. So the undercutting started. So the club appearances went from going to a club appearance and getting £2,000 in an hour to you'd get 400 quid. Really? And you'd have to go to Nottingham or you'd have to go to Birmingham. And then I always had a message from the start. So I went into reality TV thinking I was going to have it off and I didn't. That was actually the answer behind it. Yeah. Um, went with an agent and then I was going to make this like these these shoe boxes, these clear shoe boxes. And that was how Mallet started. I was going to make shoe boxes because I was a shoe collector at the time. Ended up going above and beyond as usual and making a, a sample of a sneaker and that was my first business my first proper business yeah. where I had to set up like company's house and get yeah, yeah. DPD on board and get my accountants involved yeah. everything from day one to now was literally just me just learning on the job that was it yeah that's how it started and then now it's literally the last two to three years it's gone absolutely insane what 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 was what's been the most significant change in in the last three years? Do you, do you have an investor, or is it just you? No, so it's me. My business partner started out together, yeah, and we've got a silent business partner. But okay, that was us, and it's an interesting one actually because I've never ever told anyone this. Our business partner, who is a big business partner, I done because. It weren't because we needed an injection to the business because we've never taken any cash injections. Everything we've got in the business and everything we've invested yeah. is been built up by us. Yeah. We sold shares for ourselves to get money. Right. And the reason I've done that is we sold a small part of shares. It was so I could buy a house, mm-hmm. make sure that my family was set and I could sort of stop that pressure of trying to get rich. And yeah. I was like, if I can sell a small part of this business, yeah. that's sort of it. I've done it more as an insurance. I, whatever way this goes from there, yeah. I know that like, I'm covered. Yeah. And I've yeah, got to be yeah. very, very stupid if I can't invest that money to become a success buyer myself with that. Yeah. So then Mallet, I can give it all and I yeah. can take risks. I can make this happen without having to worry what happens from here onwards. And also I've done it with a big company where it was an insurance per- policy from them as well. If if things did go go downhill, they're a big, big corporation and I could go to them for help. And touch would have never gone to them from help. Yeah. And I've let it work in my favour and whatever I sold for back then, it's worth 100 times more now. So I do kick myself every now and then. But I needed to do that because I needed to feel how that bit of money felt when it come to me. So I could stop yeah. thinking about taking it out of my business yeah. and I could let it work for itself. Yeah. So the best thing I ever done was got that in 2018, I'd done it, got that bit of money and realised, well, it's only the same as having that bit of money that I had before, really. So let's let the business work. And I really, really went to work from then onwards. And... 
the most significant part we done in the business was cracked America during COVID. Really? Yeah. It was fucking nuts, man. What changed? Uh, what <laughs> it was happened? just nuts. It was like, got to the point where I had six, seven staff at the time. I was traveling the world trying to get into the States because it was a big ambition of mine. I was doing Paris Fashion Week, New York Fashion Week. I was going out. I couldn't get the right people in front of me. It was impossible. So when I was sitting there in lockdown, in the first lockdown, I was like, if I'm sitting here and I'm actually twiddling my thumbs because everything's going online, imagine what the buyers for these stores are doing because that's how it works. I work with Selfridges, I work with Harrods, yeah. I work with Saks, New York, the big, the big boys. Yeah. What are buyers doing? Because they're not traveling Paris Fashion Week going to look at Gucci and sitting at catwalks. Now's the time we can get onto them. So I built a team digitally. I've never met these people. So I like, I've got one guy, look, has a big warehouse over in San, uh, San Diego. I've got another guy that was working for Saks, but weren't there no more. I had some PR that was for Saks and we put a team together. And within three months, we actually got into two Saks doors, which I'd been trying to do for six years. I was going to give up. I'm going to be honest with you, because I couldn't do it because yeah. I was trying everything. I was losing money now. I'm going flying to America trying to make this happen. I can't get in front of these people. And I got in front of them. And I started off with two doors and now we're in 12. How, when you say you put a team together, yeah. how, wh wh what do you mean by that? And yeah. how, how do you do it? Did you go on Indeed? And then like, so I'll tell you how I do it. <laughs> like, so I'm this looking is for the a... part where this is what there's people clever investors out there, yeah? yeah? But I personally don't feel like there's anyone better than me at earning money when it comes to what I do. Yep. You can test me on it, whatever you want to do. I, I see little, I'm, I'm like a market trader. That's what I am. I don't come back from any, back, I've got no experience or anything. I don't have any education, as I said earlier. I'm only getting cleverer as I get older. And I am as I look, this is me, yeah? But what I'll look at is I'll always find an avenue. I'm like water, I always find a way, yeah? And I'm like, so I started analyzing myself during lockdown. And I was like, I'm gonna make this happen now, yeah? So what I've done was I started searching people on LinkedIn. And I was like, let me find the buyers for these stores find an assistant buyer, see someone new was connected to him. So I got in touch with a guy that was connected to him. How are you connected to that person? And I just like started investigating. So LinkedIn was Through your LinkedIn. First, first start. That's how, look, I had a presence behind me because I was selling the best stores in the world and I was probably in six or seven countries already. Yeah. Just America that I couldn't tap into. And so it was LinkedIn, seeing someone, then I picked up the phone. I don't do things by email. Picked up the phone. Yo, yeah. can you put me into your guyless thingy? Ended up just putting this team together. It was like a hit squad. Yeah. It was like everyone had something to do. And if we implemented all this stuff, we can make this happen. So that was all done over Zoom. I cracked America over Zoom. So how many stores are you in, in America now? I don't know. Can't tell you. Loads. A lot. Yeah, I've got stores in Atlanta, New York, Miami, LA. I've got, I've got stores Definitely. everywhere. I'm just getting started. Watch when I get there. When I get there and I can actually, like, because I got done uh, during the lockdown as well, I got named on the Forbes list as well, 30 under 30, yeah. which was something I probably wouldn't have done if I didn't have that little minute to sit still because I'd never used PR. Yeah. And my story weren't really out there. How did you get on that? Forbes 30 and the got recognised for what we'd been doing. You used PR? Or you, um, I only used American PR. I've never used right. anything in England. Okay. I've always done my own PR myself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting to the point now, I probably will do. But obviously, I got, I was like NatWest Entrepreneur of the Year and then Draper's 30 list. So I started yeah. getting recognised more and more. Um, and that's how that come about. And that worked really well for me as well because... When, when someone's talking about your story and they tell you that you've been recognised by this, this and this, you get taken a bit more seriously. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I'm quite proud to say that like, I cracked the stage during lockdown. While people were sitting still, I was going out and getting it. Yeah. And I was very, very keen to come out of lockdown knowing that I'd either learnt something or yeah. I'd achieved something. And I fucking achieved a lot during lockdown. I doubled my business. That's mad, isn't it? I doubled my business. And I dealt with Brexit... And I dealt with COVID yeah. and now we're dealing with this stuff what's going on in Russia. It's all things that I'm learning on the job. Yeah. And I'm getting to the point now where I'm actually telling myself for someone that comes from a background where I'm heavily dyslexic and I've never been able to read and write great, this ain't a fluke. I'm, I'm good at what I do. 
Yeah. You could give me money to go and develop something and I can develop you something and make a success of it. I'm very, very talented in what I'm doing. Yeah. And I've only started telling myself that the last six months. I thought that it was a fluke and I was like, I'm only doing this because I was on Towie. But then I added up, how many reality stars are there? I didn't even know that. I, I heard my girlfriend said you're on Towie. Yeah. But I didn't know you were on it before you started Mallet. I thought yeah. that was way after. Started, started. That's how I started. Oh. And people were like, oh, you only got to where you are because of Towie. Well, who else has done what I've done off Towie? No. Who else? <laughs> who else is on the Forbes list? Tell me another reality star on the Forbes list. It's true, though. I used to think I was lucky. Yeah, I'd feel I was lucky. But it's not. you When when you buy your house, whatever you do, you, you, you have like, you know, like if someone dies, you have a flashback of all your memories. Yeah. Like when you buy your house, you have a flashback of all those decisions you made. And you're like, fucking hell, I have worked hard. We've worked hard, of course yeah. we are. And, and that's why I'm very thankful for where I am right now. But, and, and that's why earlier I made a big point at the start of this podcast, whether you cut out or not, yeah, it's a big, big point. I ask people about themselves before I talk about me. That's what I do. Yeah. Because I don't want people thinking that, ah, uh, this guy's off on reality TV, all he cares about is himself, because that's what majority of celebrities do. They just talk about themselves. Mm. I'll spend the first half hour talking to people about them, I'll learn something about them, and then I'll talk about myself. That's how I'll do it. Yeah, I feel like you're asking me questions. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we don't cut anything out, ever. Yeah, um, I ask you questions because I want to learn by it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, any way I can help, yeah, I'll help. Yeah, and I think it's important that the viewers see that's how I've got to where I am. Yeah. I'll use people's knowledge yeah. to like, maximise on it myself. And yeah. that's why I've made these... I, I learn from people's wins and I learn from people's losses. And I learn, ask a lot of questions and I watch a lot of the time. And that's how I've done it. And you get obsessive, like all good entrepreneurs. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. What are you obsessed with at the moment? Um, today. I don't know yet because I need to ask myself. Last week it was... Um, you say economics earlier. You're like obsessed. A little bit, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, you, you, before we because I can't even I can't even pronounce it. I call it economics or economics. What is Economi it? Well, it depends where you're from. Yeah. Well, whatever yeah. I call it, like learning learning at the moment. For example, if you asked me three months ago how the economy works, I couldn't have told you. And if, I could probably tell you now, but I'm going to tell you really shit. Yeah. But I still know. I learned from it. One thing I learned from it, and I've got to give you praise for it. You put up, do you know how money's created, yeah? And I was like, I can earn loads of money, but I don't know how it's created. Do I give a fuck? No. I was like, you should really give a fuck here because you can save yourself some money. I've only just started learning how like interest rates work and how, like, obviously, if you ain't earning like 7 to 10% of your money per year, you're losing money because of inflation. I'm going to be completely honest with you because... I don't need to sit here and act like I'm good at everything. I didn't know that until a few months ago. And I feel like, what a time to learn it. Because I sat in a bath watching how the economy works. Yeah. And I was like, when the bank raises the interest rate, you're going into a recession, yeah? I don't know in nowadays if that's the way it's going to work. But I was like, all right, cool. So I need to ring my mortgage advisor and I need to get a new fix on my mortgage because this is going to go through the roof, especially when Russia and that started happening. Mm -hmm. So things like that, I'm not an expert in it. But I know how it works now. And I know yeah. how the economic world works. And it's worked in my favour. So thanks for that. <laughs> That's all right. Because I would never have looked at that before. Because I didn't care. Because I sell shoes. Yeah. And I invest in bits and pieces. I'm not going to say what I invest in. But I'm a good investor. Yeah. And I don't shout about why I invest in. Because I don't want everyone doing it. Yeah. <laughs> but the things that I've learned in the last three months has really helped me in what I'm doing. Yeah. And I feel like to be successful... You can't be the big I am and you can't be a know-it-all. You have to have that sort of layer of, I don't know what I'm talking about here and play dumb so you can learn new things and yeah. then you can maximise on it. And that's what I do. This is why I do the podcast. Like, I guess I know quite a lot about money and all that kind of stuff. But the reason I do the podcast is because I want to learn. Mm. And I have people on that I learn from. And that's why I do it because so it, it, the time that I spend is so super valuable to me, you know. Um, but... What that like you said like I did that video. Um, where does money come from? Because if you ask a hundred people in the street, I think probably five might know. I don't think five. Not even five. No. And that's what I find crazy. I right? think you'd be lucky to get one. I'll really? Be with you, yeah, it's because mad, I, I started asking one after you put it up. Obviously, because I wanted to learn from it, and no one could tell me. 
And that, that's what's crazy, is that because it's all created out of debt, I mean, in the simplest form. And I remember when I first learned about where money comes from, I was just sat at the community going, what? Like, mm. I was like early 20s, whatever. And th- that's why I always say, like, my like, favorite quote is, if you don't understand money, you'll never have any. Mm. Um, because long term, you know, you just want, if you don't know how it moves, it's like water. You know, it's like if you look back at where people build houses, they always build them near water because you need water, right? It makes sense. Mm. And money, like this is what I say, like what I say to people is money is a bit like a river, right? You, if you're going to build a house, you want you want to be, if there's water dripping, you want to just make sure your hands are there. And if you don't understand how water drips, then you'll never catch you'll never any catch water. It, yeah. You'll be over there five miles from the river going... Mm. Well, I can't live because I can't. I've got no water. It's important. It's important, and it's something that I've started learning. And like, I'm not obsessed about it, but I know it now. I know the simple, the little simple bits about it. Where oh, is it? Is it clever to have money in the bank nowadays? Mm-mm. Nah, no. But it gives you security, right? So yeah, that's the only reason, you know. But how much do you need to be secure? Well, how much do you need? Oh, fucking hell. In no. the bank, I don't know. I don't disclose that but no. <laughs> yeah no it's true it's true and it's something that I feel like as an entrepreneur I'm a money getter I'm not I don't know much about much I know how yeah. to get money but now I'm learning these little bits and pieces now I know how to keep it yeah I know how to keep money now because yeah. I know where it needs to be and I know where it should be and where it shouldn't be so that's what, yeah. that's one thing yeah I learned from you thanks for that that's all right um uh, like the other thing is as well is that um, a lot of people ask me about business and like say I'm sat with you I'll be like well if you look around this room there's probably a thousand things you can make money out of yep. right there's windows there's microphones laptops glasses stools for a piano you know all these millions of things but it doesn't mean you should no. right catching money making money is easy right but doing it with something you love and then knowing how money works and investing it that's when you make money in your sleep, Definitely. right? You've got to do all the catching in your 20s. You'll run around like, run around everywhere trying to make cash out of everything you can. Like mm. we all did, you run around London. Most of the time busy doing nothing because mm. most of the things you do don't equate to any cash. But the ones that do are great. Um, so you do that in your 20s and then like you are 29, perfect age, you're learning about where I need to put that money so that you can just chill with your kids. You, haven't got, you have that security and you know that every night that money comes in. And that's why I didn't sell the two and a half. Because at three, I know I can get 9% forever, which is about 270 grand a year. Why, can you lock it in, yeah? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so at $3 million, if I sell that, keep it in like a stable coin, you know, um, it's about 9%. So 270 grand a year for me doing nothing. And then you've always got the money in the background. Oh. And that's why I didn't, didn't sell it early because I'm just going to wait. Because I mean, I don't need that money right now for, th- for things. I've got all my other stuff that's going on, which is fine. I, don't, I mean, you know, I'm the same as you. I have a 20 quid a month prep, prep membership. That's my coffee sorted. I don't spend that much money. So when that gets to that, then that 270 grand a year is, is free money forever, you know? Wow. You know, so that's how I look at that investment in particular, that one investment. But I'm, I'm 10 years on you, right? What if it drops? I wait. So, oh yeah, because it ain't valued unless it's for sale, is it? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I only lose money if I sell it, right? Yeah. I only make money if I sell it. Interesting. You know, yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> so that's kind of how that's kind of how it works. So young guys, and I always say like, plan twenty years instead of like two years, because people go, oh, like they'll look at you and go, I'm going to bring out a shoe brand, and they'll think that they'll be rich in two years. I it doesn't. It just doesn't work like that. I won't let them know. Yeah, like, I'm being serious. It's like, like, I, won't, I won't let them. Yeah. Like, it's, and, and that's the honesty. I'll be completely honest with you. I, I won't. I won't allow it. I won't. I, I'll, I'll stay paranoid so much on the point of I was a hungry young boy once, yeah. and that's how I achieved what I did because someone let me. Yeah. But where I'm at at the moment, I can't let anyone else come in. Really? That's it. No, there's no. Isn't there room? There's no space. Room? No, I don't give a fuck. I'm not. I'm not having it. <laughs> not not round where I am. I can't. Really? Can't have it. I know it sounds mad. I won't. I won't allow it. Who's your biggest competitor? Gucci. Really? Go, it depends what store. Gucci, um, Givenchy, them sort of brands. Yeah. The top luxury brands. 
boss to an extent. Yeah. Um, if you were, my main competitor, I wouldn't mention the names, but you probably know, around the same price point. But I actually don't. I don't it's really, cool where we yeah. are at the moment. I'm, I'm all right where we are at the moment. There's the, Everyone can eat. But what I don't want is people to try and take inspiration from me mm-hmm. to then try and come against me. Because that's when the gloves are off. <laughs> so that's just easier for me to just keep the market as it is. And in the UK, I feel like I've got the market sewn up. So I'll make a point of it. I I'm, 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 don't want anyone else in here. It's a crowded enough market and I'm not going to let anyone come and try and take it off me. How many shoes do you sell a year? A or is that too long a period? A year? A million? 700,000 maybe? I shouldn't have asked that because you said you're not good with numbers and stuff. No, I am. Oh, you are? You are. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because you just said a million, half a million, 700,000. Are you yeah. trying to not let your competitors know? <laughs> He's actually switched on to fuck and he's just like, oh, maybe a mil, I don't know, half a mil. Just acts he's, silly, acts yeah, like, like yeah. he doesn't know, but really you know, know exactly. I know to the pair, man. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I know to the lace what I sell. I know exactly what I sell. I ask every day yeah. where I'm up to. Yeah. I'm actually, the bigger it gets, I'm starting to slow down. But look, if I tell you how many pairs of shoes I sell, you can work out my turnover and you can work out my profits and you can work out my weaknesses from that. You can work out what I have budget-wise yeah. from things. So... I didn't think you were going to answer that. Yeah, never. <laughs> never, never going to ask that. Um, but off camera, I'd answer it and I'd happily yeah. tell you and I'd walk you through it. But... Yeah, yeah. But I, yeah, it gives people an angle. It gives right? people an angle, doesn't yeah. it? It's like... it's. I sell a lot of pairs of shoes. I, I, put, I sell an enough pair of shoes to be the number one brand in most of my stores. Put it that way. Yeah. And by a long way. But I keep my prices lower because I want to be accessible for the younger generation. But yeah, I sell a hell of a lot of pair of shoes. Yeah, I, I, I was actually in a bar. And did I send you a pair yeah. of shoes that Kitty was so, wearing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, so I'll get the train past the West Ham Stadium. Yeah. And... I'd say the whole platform was full of fans going the other way to go to the thing. There was, say, 300 people on the platform, probably more, yeah? Yeah. I reckon 50% had my shoes on. Really? Yeah. To the point where I get contacted by a club saying, what the hell, right? I've never seen anything like it. From the, I feel like I've got the, from the age 18 to 40, I've got the whole market sewn up. For the premium market. What shoes did you wear when you were, like, that age? 18 Re- to 20? No, like shoes. Shoes. I'd yeah. say sneakers are probably like Reebok Classics, Reebok Workouts, and then the odd pair of Air Max. But then I don't feel like that was that luxury market really back then, was it? It was more so shoes, wasn't it? You yeah. actually wear smart shoes back then. Yeah. Um, I don't even know. Gucci was too expensive for us. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was one. This is a new market, in my opinion, because we never had seven hundred pounds to spend on shoes. Who had seven hundred pounds to spend on shoes? Nobody. And then I was like, who actually has seven hundred pounds now to spend on shoes? What if someone can come along and give you the same service as that seven hundred pounds shoe, but sell you for two hundred pounds? Are you going to buy two pairs? Probably yes. Yeah. And that's where I've done it. And yeah, that's no, why it's it's a simple formula. Yeah, it's a. I tell you, it's a weird one. If I saw a guy with a thousand pound pair of shoes I d- mate, I'm just not in the market for that so I'd just be like why are you wearing a thousand pound you can invest that so much yeah <laughs> like, and, and that's where the social media has come into it yeah because the people that the young kids are aspiring to be are wearing a thousand pound shoes because that's what you can talk about really that's, that's what people are talking about at the moment people yeah. are mentioning songs certain brands and every single rap song is mentioning the same brands after or after again. So the rappers are giving these brands free promo. So when you're giving these free promo, the people who are trying to be like the singers, the rappers, the actors, yeah. they're buying that product. But a lot of them ain't got the money to buy it. So I'm giving you something which isn't luxury, it's premium, so I can deliver you that product. And I'm not too caught up on margins. And that's how I feel like I've got a success. You can take note and try and do the same thing. I won't let it happen. Yeah. How did you get celebrities to wear them? A lot of them just off their own back. Yeah? Like one day I was chilling and maybe I've got a call from Selfridges saying Floyd Mayweather's here and he's buying all your shoes. Come and meet him. And I was like, no, nah, I'm all right. I'm, I'm busy at the moment because I was, I was 
doing whatever and I was like look I'm not going to turn up and be like hi Floyd I'm Tommy you know, I own them shoes because he ain't going to give a fuck who I am yeah. and I was like alright well we're going to leave his address to, to send him some stuff I was like alright yeah cool leave it there he bought the stuff that day and I didn't pick the address up to send him the stuff so I was like ah oh, shit we lost an opportunity there and a year later he's wearing the stuff he bought a year ago I've had Mark Wahlberg buy my stuff. I've had Conor McGregor wearing my stuff. I've had, oh, I don't know, every, I've had a lot of people wearing my stuff. Yeah. And it's just one of them things where when you're selling in luxury stores next to luxury brands, it's only a matter of time, yeah, yeah. that brand awareness where people are going to start buying just things. And I don't do too much celebrity seeding. I don't pay anyone to wear my stuff. It's literally, it's just like appreciation for what we're doing. And everyone always asks me, how did I do it? I don't, I don't have the answer for that. Well, you didn't do it. They just did it. It happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It happened by aggressively promoting myself. Yeah. And, a grow, and, and, and developing the brand, constant, 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 to the yeah. point where your hard work is only going to get rewarded once, isn't it? It's yeah. like when people see it, they're going to be like, wow. And that's how that happened. Yeah, because a lot of, you see people's strategies for like social media advertising is to get influencers to wear stuff. Yeah. Um, but if you, do, if you do the branding in the right way, they'll end up wearing it anyway. Yeah, right. if, you can walk, if you can put something on the shop floor that someone can't walk past without picking up, then you've got a winner. Yeah. I don't give a fuck what influencers wear my stuff to run the shop. Yeah. Because all I know is if you walk past my stuff in the shop, you're going to buy it over, you're going to buy the next brand. It doesn't matter what influencer strategy they've got. Yeah. I've got an old school strategy in place, yeah, where you're going to buy something which is value for money, which has a good name behind it, which has a story behind it, yeah. and it's accessible. That's, that's it. What else do you need? Oh, it looks good. Yeah, what else do you need? The, a lot of the stuff that influencers are promoting, they don't believe in in the first place. Yeah, of course. So if someone believes in my product and my story, then yeah, we could probably cut a deal. Yeah. But if you're just going to put it on and go, yeah, man, I'm wearing these shoes. They're from San so No, don't, I'm not interested in that. People aren't stupid. They don't yeah. buy into it. Tell yeah. the story of it. That's, that's what sells it. The story behind it. Yeah. And that's why I don't stop telling the story because the more I tell it and the more it gets out there... I'm taking the kids that are looking to at them thousand pound shoes and trying to be like someone else. And then they're looking at me as a young businessman and they're looking at what I'm delivering. They're like, hold on, I can wear this and be cool. And I'm not going to make my mum go skint at the same time. And that's what I've done. So what other businesses would you like to own? Because I see you're into your fitness and all that now. Yeah. Um, I've always been into fitness. Yeah. Um, I'm not an athlete. I'm naturally not a fit person, to be honest with you. I do training because of the way it makes me feel. I love the way it makes me feel. And it feels like if I can wake up early and train, it gives me a purpose for the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. No matter what I'm battling during the day, stress-wise, if you've trained and you've worked out and you're aching, everything else don't matter, does it? Mm -hmm. You're like, get me through the rest of the day, man. <laughs> Give me some chicken. And at the moment, I'm going to be completely honest with you. When it comes to business, I'm... I'm open to everything, but I'm I'm building at such a fast pace what I'm doing. I'm not interested in anything else. Mm. Um, and what else can I achieve at 29 at the moment? Like I look at what you've got, and like I was asking what businesses you own. You own. In a few years, that would be lovely for me to do that because it'll give me something to get up for. I can go down my my gym or that do that. All of that stuff is good. Yeah. But at the moment, I'm like I'm at war with myself at the moment for making this bigger. I can't take my eye off the ball. So as much as I would love to go and go into more businesses, I don't feel like I'm at the stage where I can do. Yeah. Because I still feel like it's just rented from me and it can be taken at any time. Mm -hmm. And there's still going to be someone as ambitious as me who's coming to take this off me. That's how I wake up every day. Is that your fear? Someone like you coming along? 100%. Is it? Really? Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. It is. Honestly, it is. That's my fear, yeah. Because I've done it. There was, there was a lot of brands around when I come around that ain't around no more. And yeah. I focused on them. I was like a predator. I focused on them for a long time. What are they doing? All right, what are they doing wrong? What's the customers? Everything i done. So if I take my eye off the ball, because what happens is, is in fashion... You've got the guys that want to earn money like me yeah. and be the biggest brand in the world. And you've got the guys that want to be cool. Right. And they want to be famous, yeah? I don't need to be famous. I'm already famous. So my new thing is, yeah, how can I be the next... Well, I look up to, to, the, to the big brands that have been around for the last 40 years. Not the cool niche brands that everyone's like, oh my God, man, look at him with his sunglasses and walking around Paris Fashion Week. Fuck him. 
I think I care about him. <laughs> I want to know what everyone. I want to know everyone on the underground's wearing. Now I want them all wearing my stuff. I want all the shopkeepers to be wearing my stuff. I want the waiters. I want the waitresses. I want the bus drivers. I want everyone wearing my stuff. I don't want to sit in a corner at a fashion show like acting cool. Fuck them. Why do I want to be like that for? I, I'm not cool. I'm not like that. That's not how I roll. <laughs> I want volume, and that's 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 why I stay up all night. Because I'm trying to work out how I can make that volume. I look at all these buildings, yeah. And all these people walking around, someone has to give them shoes. And I want them to wear my shoes. So that's why I'm like this. <laughs> Mad, isn't it? So until every, what, what would you do if everyone on earth was wearing your shoes? Then they've got to wear the clothes to go with it. Oh, you do clothes too? Yeah. But it's not a, the, bigger, the bigger part of my business because yeah. I don't want to take my eye off the ball of menswear footwears, which, which I'm actually an expert in. What percentage is your footwear? Uh, 90? It's got to be 90. Yeah, but yeah. I've only just launched clothing. So yeah, I could yeah. make it 50-50 if I put the love into it. Because it's accessible and it's easy to do and it's easy to brand clothing. Yeah. But I'm so obsessed with footwear. And I don't want to take my afterball. As I said, like, the thing that I've noticed and where the biggest failure comes in business, yeah, is someone will have their first good year in business and they think they're a top businessman and they think, all right, I'll start another one off. You don't understand how much loss you have to take to be a success. Mm -hmm. Most of it's losing and at the start, isn't it? Yeah. And then if I sold Mallet and then had a big chunk of money, a, a really big chunk of Mallet money, then it can then you can start investing it and then you can start doing little businesses that you love in the background. But at the moment, it's all about the percentage that you just asked. How do I make it so I've got a massive menswear business, massive women's wear business, massive kids wear business? Massive clothing business. Then you've got accessories. It's just like, it's never ending. So it looks from the outside like I'm a success. I'm not, I'm just getting started. Yeah. Well, the, the thing is the 90% you want that turnover to stay 90, that 90% needs to stay that turnover. You don't want it to be 50, 50, but the shoes like drop another 40%. Not gonna let it happen. Yeah, that's what you, that's the problem when you launch other stuff because it takes the same dedication. Of course it does. And then, and that's why we say talking about 20 years, not like two years, because that's how long it takes. It takes 10 to 20 years. When I started doing my, started actually started doing business, I used to do five year plans. Mm -hmm. But then I stopped doing them because I was achieving them in five weeks, five yeah. months. Because yeah. I realised I'm not a normal person. Once I've got something in my head, I'm going to get it. do not matter what has to happen to get it. Yeah. So I stopped doing five-year plans. And I started putting in end goal things. But it changes every day. Like, yeah. I don't know. At Sometimes you can ask me a question and I'm like, I'm selling everything. I've had enough. I can't stand this no more. And I'll have a day off and I'll see someone like putting something on Instagram. I'm like, fuck that actually. I'm better than them. I ain't having that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to launch this. But what I've learned is over the last um, year or so is delegation is actually the key to success because mm -hmm. you can't do everything by yourself. Mm -hmm. And if I can give away a job to someone they can do it like 70% as good as I can do it then give it to them mm -hmm. and that's where I'm learning at the moment because I can't have my stuff in 10 countries and different time zones and run it by myself yeah so I'm learning that that's my little transition period at the minute yeah when you scale up it's like anything like it, and this is this is a thing that I, I feel like people don't talk about as much because it I get shocked by it you know so like, for example, my house, I have a gardener that's there three days a week. I pay him 1300 quid a month. It's mad, isn't I it? I don't even live there right now because I have it, I'm developing it. Or like, But I'm, I'm like, I didn't know I was going to have to pay a gardener because it's like seven acres or whatever. I was like, 1300 quid a month. Yeah, I was I like, how much would it cost if you'd done it yourself? What, it's time. Yeah, exactly. Right? How I don't, much would it I don't cost? have add the time. Up, add, up, add up it yearly. Yeah. Oh, also, I don't know... Fuck all about trees. Like a tree fell down and he's like there the next day cutting it away, like cutting it into wood. I'm like, I don't know any of this yeah, stuff. Yeah, I'm like, mad. I'm like a total newbie. But then I'm like, I can't tell people like this because they'll be like, you've got a gardener, you pay 1300 quid a month. Like, what are you, a wanker? Like, no, but you've, you know, that's, that's, that's what comes of it. It's scaling. When you start, you know, like the more you own, the more admin it is, right? It's like you, you, you need more staff, you need more people. And that's what happens. But people don't really talk about that because it's one of those things. It's like, so if you have a Lamborghini, right, and like the tire goes flat, right, mm -hmm. and you complain to like someone that doesn't have a Lamborghini, they're like, uh, shut yeah, the you've fuck got up. a Lamborghini, shut up. Yeah, right. So it's like you can't really say anything because you just look like a wanker. It's a big problem that I've got. That is John. Now you said it. Yeah, because 
I get a lot. Of, I, I get a lot of love on social media about what I've achieved, and I appreciate everything. But I put a lot of quotes up sometimes, depending on my mood. I like to be very open about how my journey go, is going. Yeah. And sometimes I've had enough. Like I'll be honest with you. Sometimes I'm like, why am I doing this? Mm. And a lot of the times uh, I'll put something on social media about like money's not everything. It's literally it's not everything. I was sometimes I was happy about money. And you get the same comments from the same people. Yeah, it's fucking easy for you to save loads of money. I can work 24 hours sometimes, yeah? And that's my opinion. Sometimes I was happier with less money. But the thing I get from people is just nuts. It's like, ah, oh, it's so easy for the guy driving a G-Wagon saying how he feels happy today. Well, it don't mean because you've got a G-Wagon that you're happy, does it? It don't mean because you've got a gardener that you're happy. Yeah. You need to manage all of them things. And that is stressful, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I find it stressful. And then you've got to get over the anxiety of are they doing a good enough job? Or are they robbing you because you're paying someone and they doing... Do you know what I mean? And then you've got to realise if you can trust the people coming around your house. It's just mad. Yeah. It is mad, isn't it? So the gardener thing, what you just said... People go to me, have you got a cleaner? Have you got a gardener? A lot of the time I lie, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you. Because I don't want them going, ah, oh, you've gone up your own ass. Why have you got a gardener? Yeah. Because um, I worked 18 hours, yeah? And you can't <laughs> cut the grass at night. Because then you're going to fuck it up. And your missus will kill you if and you it, don't give her a cuddle. Do you know what I'm like, saying? Literally, it, like... It's the balance, isn't it? Yeah, that's the... That's what... The thing is, that's what... The thing is, it's like... You know, you know we're talking about people... They don't explain how money works. Right, and then when you get money, you go, oh, I'm getting fucked. Well, I didn't expect that. It's because you didn't learn it. Cause, and the thing is, everybody doesn't learn this. So I feel like if everyone was taught all of this, mm -hmm. right, they would understand people way better, you know? Because it's like, that. Like I, I, was, um, I, did, I had like an entrepreneur club. I've actually thought about redoing it, but it was basically you had to have your own business. Um, to be a member and I ran it, it was like we had like 40 guys um, and a couple of women um, who you know they all own their own companies and what we talked about because I I, um, I basically planned out the day um, you know we have breakfast and I um, to pick the questions that we all talked about it was, it was constructive conversation it was all picked out by me it, was, it wasn't like random just networking like weird mm. um, and uh, the great thing about it was it was people on a really high level talking to other people on a level about things that they can't talk about, like you said. Mm. So you'd be like, one of the questions I'd be like, right, you'd sit in groups of five and you'd ask, the question would be, what is your biggest problem in your business last three months? 85% of the time it's staff, right? But then what happens is when those people get together, you know, like us out of this conversation, we would talk openly about things and not worry that someone's going to be like, oh, you c just because you've got a G wagon, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't be unhappy. You can't complain about petrol prices. You've got a G wagon. Yeah, you've got a Ferrari. Do you it's, know what I mean? Exactly. But, really. But there are a lot of, you know, there are like, it, it's a admin nightmare. It's a, it's, and the, the other thing is as well is that the government are trying to fuck you the whole time, right? So you like you think you you think oh, I found where the well is. Yeah, I've built a well. I'm getting the money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, there's like people with their hands in it all yeah, the time. You've got you to know? walk down to, to get at home. You've got to go through the wilderness. It's yeah. like, it's just, yeah, I, I get it. And it, get it. it. And, I'm not complaining because I love it and it's the life I chose. But from the outset, if when, when you're trying to, you can't talk to no one about it because you know, that's the answer you get. Yeah. And, but if people were ever, because... I've actually not ever been like that. I've, if I ever saw a Ferrari, it's like, oh man, what's that guy do? You know? Yeah, yeah same here. Yeah, but but I get that other people aren't. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just that they don't know, mm. like don't know how it works. And that's the problem with our education system, our media, all that kind of stuff. Is that I've always, I always say profit is a positive word. If you don't have profit, the economy don't work. Mm -hmm. If you don't have profit, you can't employ people. If, if no one has jobs, then what are we doing? Exactly. Sat, yeah. sat like playing with mud. You know. So profit is a positive word. But it's not at all like that, you know? People think, oh, someone's got money, must be a wanker or, or whatever, you know? Must be like, you know, whatever it is they think, you know? I was brought up like that, actually. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because obviously I don't come from money. So when I'd met someone with money, it was a big thing. But the older I'm getting, the more I'm starting to learn about it. Yeah. So yeah, that club sounds good. Let's start that again. Do you know, I've thought about it, but I, it comes down to time. Yeah, of course it does, yeah. Right? And that, that you know, it... it it's cool because like m most of the guests that have been on the podcast would be perfect people for it um 
and I did do it before, but COVID, like two, three years, that's like seemed to linger. So mm. I didn't do it for, for that time. But I've thought about it, but then it comes down to time again, you know? Mm. And then it's like, um, it, I, I haven't felt right doing it right now just because I've got so much going on. I've got building a house Costa Rica and stuff. And now when you're ready, you know, let's do things. it. Good. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Well, you're only around the corner now. Mate, I can throw a stone at my office. I'm seeing if people are working in there now. Are you going to come to CrossFit? You said... <laughs> yeah, not you, today, you, no. Not today. Oh, I, ain't not? Got no, I ain't got my gym stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll get you a little PE kit. I ain't got no gym stuff. I forgot my PE kit. I got a letter from my mum. I got a letter. Yeah. How many questions did we get? We're getting good questions. Yeah, well, we, the subjects to talk about. Um, yeah. I mean, some of the questions you didn't answer, remember? What one? About shoes. How yeah, don't worry about it. Whoever <laughs> asked that question, stop being nosy, man. Well, that's the point of the conversation. Like, we want it, like, most people are like, yeah, I've done it like this, la, la, la. But no, no actually, it's funny because everyone I've talked to, they've not been worried about someone else coming along. Oh, really? Where you have that fear. Of yeah, course I the, do. You're yeah. the first one. Of course. The, the thing is, like when the, the thing is when you start mallet there was nothing like it right so to to create because it's like say this circle is like the market what you did is you've gone in and you created a wedge right yeah. and then they're looking classic market and they're looking at your wedge yeah. and going well, how can we get in there right but you've created your own wedge and the thing is for someone else to come in that market they have to create their own wedge they can't copy you anyway yeah but there, there's a million people who you work with along the it's a small industry and you work with so many different people. The amount of people I've worked with and Nab's trying to bring their own brand out. Mm, it's and part of it. They've been inspired by me and then they badmouth me while they're doing it. Oh, this is better than that shit, blah, blah, blah. God. Well, we've definitely yanked because you ain't selling the five slash seven slash million pairs, are you? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, I had it with Mobble. People used to come with Mobble back in the day and then like uh, a, a week later after the rally, they'd, be, they'd start a rally and then they'll be like messaging all the people on the on the mod ball. But exactly. the mod, but mod ball is like no. Nah, like. And and that's and that's and that's one of the problems that um like I face because I'm I'm very paranoid about my market because I'm I'm ambitious and I I, I know I, I've I've done it to someone and it's it's easier and I I know I'm on the radar for big brands as well. I'm watched by big big brands and what I'm doing next and things like that, which is lovely. I love that, but yeah, I just don't disclose certain things. Because I've, I'm, I'm not where I want to be yet either. Next time, innit? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there's ways to find out anyway. I'm not good with numbers, man. Yeah. <laughs> there ain't, because I've got Mallet UAE, I've got Mallet Europe, I've got Mallet England, I've got Mallet America, I've got Mallet yeah. South Africa, I've got Mallet so on, so on, so on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bad with numbers. This is, this is just an act, isn't I'm it? This whole numbers. only way is Essex was just a front to make you look I'm like you don't know. I'm bad numbers, man. I bet you got like a first in mathematics <laughs> and economics at uni and like did it all online. I'm bad with numbers. <laughs> like a, do a doctorate of science or some shit. He's like building my rockets in three years. My calculator's broke. I don't know how many pairs we're selling. Isn't it? It's a I, lot though. It's just a front, isn't it? I don't, I don't know, man. I bet your accent is like, I bet you went to Eton. What's and you're like, oh, fine. <laughs> Hello. I bet you were like, I bet you on speed dial with Boris. No, you know what it is? You know what it is? I do it for, I do it, do you know what it is? It's, I do it for motiva uh, motivational purposes only, yeah? yeah? It's the only reason when I talk about my businesses, yeah? I'm not going to gain anything by telling anyone what I'm worth or how many pairs I'm selling, uh, which is a lot. And I'll be honest with you, it's a lot. Yeah. It's more than most people in the UK. But I've still got to remain relatable. Mm. And that's the main thing that I really fight to do because I'm a young guy. I come from a completely normal background. I found success young, but how do I stay relatable? And I need to interact with my customers and I need to be the same person I was because Mallet's built off the 18 year old me. So it's quite hard to find the medium in between. So that's why I don't talk about anything along them lines of, I don't need to tell people how well I'm doing. They know how well I'm doing. Cause if I weren't doing well, no one would be bothered about it. Hmm. So on the numbers front, I'm not too sure how, how it's going at a minute, but it's going well. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <laughs> okay, how do you balance all your work with having a missus and a kid? You don't. You don't. There's no such thing. So work becomes life yeah. and it sort of becomes 
the last six months we were living in my new house, I've got my new office. I don't take any work calls in front of Georgia. Um, with my little boy, it's, it's very hard to be honest with you. It's tough because I'm ambitious and I want to be a good dad. And sometimes I've been screaming and shouting on the phone in my office and I look through the door and I see him in his little walker looking, laughing. And that makes my heart break, man. Because I'm like, oh shit. I'm doing it again. I'm letting them work get to me. I'm becoming stressed out again. So I'm starting to, got to the point now where I'm learnt that anything from now on is a bonus. I've got to the point where I've got a good story to tell. So if everything ends tomorrow, can I be happy with it? 100% yes. Mm. Everything else at the moment is just me just being an entrepreneur and being greedy and being ambitious. So I feel like I've put things in place now where I can be a bit calmer around my family because I'm not driving myself mad about things. Um, I don't talk about work to Georgia no more. I don't really talk about what I'm doing next. And I just try to keep it completely different to my day-to-day -day life, which is hard because it's part of my life. Mm. I wake up every morning and I think about what I'm going to, what I want to achieve. So I feel like if you're going to have a phone call and you're going to be screaming and shouting and you're having a shit day, just keep it away from your missus. Try mm. and find the, um, try and find a group of friends that you can sit there and talk about because you have to talk about it. You can't just bottle it all up. But like, for example, talking to someone like you, you'll understand my day-to-day -day problems because you probably go through the same things. That's helped me balance my day-to-day -day life. Getting an office and making sure that I go to my office for a few hours a day mm -hmm. and do my main calls there definitely helps. Um, giving back helps seeing someone on the street and needs money so I can stop and give them money and talk to them for two minutes makes me realise that I'm really lucky so it calms me down a little bit and I know that sounds a little bit, bit like therapy but that's how I've made my balance me at home with Georgia and my baby I'm still the same person as when I'm at work I just don't talk about it mm. I didn't try and be like the you know where people are like there's the business side of you and then there's the home side of you I don't have that I'm me I'm me 24 hours a day, I'm me. Yeah. But I try and give myself different stages in the day to cope with different things. And that's how I've learned how to do it. And I might have probably, have I made you go around in circles there a little bit? No, I've just realised people like you and me are undateable. It's mad. You know, like, we are, we are, yeah, we are. Because if you, like, that was my thought. Because I'm, I'm the same, like, me and my girlfriend have been a year this, year, this week. And um, it's like, I talk about, there's, everything I talk about is my work stuff. She doesn't give a fuck. Like, well, she, she, she. No, trust me. No, I'm being honest with her. I'm being honest with her. She actually, she. No, trust like, me. Now she cares, mate. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm been together eight years, engaged. I've been for everything. She does not give a fuck. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, yeah, John, mate. Yeah. It was so easy. Like, all she wants, right, is your attention. Yeah, yeah, it's true. She don't give a fuck how much you've earned. She ain't bothered. I don't tell her that. No, no, but what I'm saying is... <laughs> is that what I you know, were doing? No, no, no. But I've been, I've been <laughs> no, together with Georgia for eight years and Georgia would not be able to tell you what I'm worth or... Yeah, yeah. But... Yeah, same, but she like... She don't give a fuck about what I'm achieving. But the problem with people like us, yeah, or entrepreneurs, is, and then we are obsessed with... Because we, we get so much value out of our work. We, people call it work, but it's not because it's not a job. But we, that's our thing that we love. So we get excited about it. That's what we want to talk about. It. That's what we want to talk about. It's like cars. I love cars. My girlfriend loves cars. But, and I talk about cars. I probably go into a bit too much detail probably and she's sort of like, you know, whatever. Mm. But that's, people like us, right? Aren't, like people, you know, like, I don't know. <laughs> no, no, I'll get where you're coming from here. Cyclists, right? Everyone hates cyclists, mm. apart from cyclists. I don't know why I'm talking about cyclists. They'll probably fucking hate me now. But a cyclist, I assume, just has a job. Right, yeah. and then they go back and they put on the fucking hat, yeah. and then they go, then they go cycling. They're probably a good husband, yeah, right, because they just like cycling, yeah, right. They go home and at the weekend I'm going a bit of cycling, and that's it. And that, but people like us, that's why I'm saying like no, they no, are, no, they on, are cyclists, because <laughs> <Carry on. laughs> like, people like us fucking all weekend. Like if if my missus is there, I'm sort of like. Is she doing anything that I can go and do some work? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Like, you, you, 100%. You busy? If she puts a box set on, I'm like, yes. Sweet. Yes. Like, I'm Auto doing what? Trader, yeah. Auto Trader. Auto Trader there. <laughs> fucking Mallet.com there. All of my stores there. And I'm like, I love it, yeah? She's like, Tommy, what are you doing? Um, no, nothing. I'm Research. just researching. And I'm like, how much? Uh, I'm Googling. Oh, like, God. 
How much is that worth that day? I checked an hour ago. Why am I checking again? Uh, yeah. But that's what I'm about. So uh, we're the really, same. no matter who you go with, after a few years, does not give a fuck what we're achieving. Mm. They don't care. Because they've seen you win, 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 and all they yeah. want is you at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I've learned now, don't talk to children about my work. Yeah. Don't. There's no point. I I'll show her maybe if I wear my stuff. She goes, oh, that's nice. Because she don't expect anything less from me. Yeah. So that's <laughs> it. Yeah. So like, my little boy, I'm going to take him to work a few days a week because I want him to learn how, how business and that works. Yeah, yeah. But- How old is he? 10 months. <laughs> but three days a week at work already. <laughs> but I want him to still, I'm gonna, I'm gonna oh at a young age teach him like yeah. how money works. Yeah, yeah. So you have to sweep the warehouse and you need to keep this clean. Yeah. And then this is the boss there. Da, da. Yeah. I want to teach him that from young. So he, so he sort of has it graded in his head. But apart from that, I don't talk about yeah. what I'm winning about no more to nobody yeah. because it looks like I'm either a boring fucker or I'm shying off. So yeah. I just keep it to myself. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's hard if when you're excited. But, you know, that's an important question you asked there about, yeah. about how do how do I balance it? And the answer is there uh, for someone like us, there ain't really an answer to it, man. You have to just read the room, and yeah. I don't know, man. I'm probably really shit at it, mate. When you're uh, dude, I'm the same. I, I'm I spend so much time on Auto Trader. I have like ten saved searches, and SLS is one. I'm like, well, they keep going up. Like, crazy. you can get one. I want one, but they're just you can't get a low mileage one, mm. and you know, they just to get something around money. the 15 to 20 mark and don't go above that, but then you can't drive it. Yeah. I don't just, know. Yeah. I don't just, know. You've got a Ferrari anyway. Yeah. Stick to the Ferrari, innit? What other cars do you want? Um, my next car, do you know what? I nearly bought an SLR McLaren, but then I started looking at the servicing bills in it and I was like, I don't think it's going to work because absolute fortunes to run. But apart from that, I'm a Mercedes guy, man. I love Mercedes. I won't mind a Ferrari because um, they're going to be value soon, aren't they? Are they discontinuing the V12 or something? Um, or they're already discontinued? I don't know. Well, the 812 is the last V12, but um, yeah, all the, all, like my car, the 458 is naturally aspirated, but all the ones after that are turboed and mm. they're just, they're not the same. Yeah, I won't mind a super fast, to be fair. That's what I'm looking at at the minute. Yeah, that's the 812. Sick. They, they are they are nice, but they're just crazy money. But I just don't can't be bothered looking after it. I'm gonna be honest with you. It's just long. Mm. Yeah. It's like buying a dog, isn't it? It's like you have to look after it. Yeah, dogs are great. Though. Yeah, no, I chill. love dogs. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. But I've already got a dog, right? And I've got four cars. I don't or three cars. I don't need anything else in a minute to take my attention on. <laughs> and when you ask me that question, what do I want? Now I'm thinking about what I'm gonna buy. So now I'm going to leave you and sit an auto trader for the rest of the day. Looking at what I, what I can't get. But it motivates you. No, it does. Right? And that's what motivation. Element, yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah. It's important to have something that you can direct your attention to mm -hmm. and you can spend a few hours looking at. Mm. And then before, before you know it, you're de-stressed because you've been looking at something. And I find yeah. that's really important. Yeah, it is true. I find it's really important to do or, that. Or if we didn't have auto trader, we'd probably just chill and spend more time with the missus. Mm. <laughs> no, because you need you would be thinking about something, can it? Anyway, whatever, man. <laughs> or cycling, you could do cycling. If you, you didn't go on the trade, you go cycling. Yeah, or golf. I tried golf. Nah, boring, isn't it? I feel but, like I'm at that stage now, and I was out on the weekend, and I said to one of my friends, "No matter what I achieve, I'm still people look at me like I'm a hood rat." Do you know what I mean? Really? Yeah, like I went to the Bluebird in Chelsea in the weekend, and like. People just looked at me funny. I don't know if it's the way I talk or the company I keep, yeah. Bluebird is a what, a restaurant? It's that little bar upstairs. Bar. And it's just like, you can see that like, I stick out. Really? From, yeah, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. It might be saying in my own head, but I felt it when I tried <laughs> golf. I didn't feel like people, I, did, I just felt like I shouldn't have been there when I started playing golf. I went what? driver's range, I had a few bad experiences. And I was like, all right, this ain't meant for me, man. I'm gonna really? go and buy a car. <laughs> well, you're a car guy. I'm a car guy, aren't you? Yeah. So I'm just going to do mod ball, the next mod ball. You should do it. When is it? End of May to the Monaco Grand Prix. No way. Mm -hmm. Finishes there. Watching the Grand Prix. We'll talk about it after. All right. We'll talk about it after. But yeah. Those, are my, those are my questions. And that, that are your only questions? Yeah. Yeah, the balance one. The balance one's important. I think it's the, the balance one. I'll come back on that and I'll tell you the answer to that. But the minute... I don't have the answer for it. It's just hard to switch off. It's hard to switch off. And it, even like 
where I don't drink and I don't feel like I have any off button. Like training's a good one for me. Mm-hmm. That hour run that I do or cycling, but even that, I get addicted to that. How can I beat the timing? Or how can I be better than everyone else here? And then I didn't feel, I didn't think I was competitive, man. And I was like, I realised how bad I am. I'm actually terrible. Do you know what, actually, right? I know the answer. Go on. Age. Do you think so, yeah? Yeah, because when you get a bit older, you realise like you get the younger ones stuck doing CrossFit. You see them around, and you're like, fucking hell, they're better than me already. Pointless. Yeah. Because like, and then you do it for fun. Yeah. You know? It, that's what happens. Is that your phone at the door? No, that's Rosie, because you've got to do a Q&A in a bit. Oh, lovely. Who's yeah. Rosie? PA. Um, do you know what I was going to ask you? Yeah. Go on, go for it. Modball, we're on that. You can ask me after. Yeah, I'll ask you after. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Any more for the podcast? Or are we, are we good? Um, if you're a cyclist, don't at me. No, joking. Uh, <laughs> it's like we love them. We love them all. <laughs> and um, one thing that I'll need to recommend you, yeah, if, if you don't know something... Don't matter how high up you are and whatever you do, get obsessed with researching it mm. and then you can be it. That's what I started doing. So thanks for the tip on the economy. That's all right. Thanks for coming in. And Finally, after a year. I'm going to ask the Bitcoin question. All right, done. <laughs> <laughs>